This is a very nice question related to functions where we are given a composite function f of f of x as this, and we need to find the value of f of 0. Look at this input carefully. Inside this function f, we have some input which is nothing but f of x, right? But we want to find the value of f of 0. So what is the first step that comes to our mind? Yes, right. We need to equate f of x to 0. But hey, there's a problem here. We don't actually know what f of x is yet. The question only gives us f of f of x, but it never tells us the direct formula for f of x. So, we can't just plug in the f of x equal to 0 directly. Instead, we have to work smartly. We'll use the given information and maybe start by substituting some simple values for x, like 0 or 1. So, as a first step, let k denote the number that equals f of 0. Now, do one thing. In this equation, substitute the value of x as 0. What do we get? We get f of f of. This x becomes 0, and that equals 0, square minus 0 plus 1, which simplifies to 1. So, we conclude that f of f of 0 equals 1. But hey, this inside f of 0 is simply equal to k, so this means that f of k equals 1. Now, let us try to do something interesting. Substitute x as k in this equation. The left side becomes f of f of k, and the right side becomes k square minus k plus 1. We are doing this so that somehow we can find an equation in terms of k, and later solve for k to get f of 0. But hey, f of k is simply 1, and thus the left side becomes f of 1 equals this. Okay, it feels like we are stuck for now, because in order to find the value of k, we need f of 1. So what to do? Are you still alive? It's about to get even more thrilling now. Next, let us examine what happens when we plug in the value of x as 1. It gives f of f of 1 equals 1 square minus 1 plus 1, which also simplifies to 1. So we have f of f of 1 equals 1. Let us repeat the same thing we did for 0 case. So, let m denote the number that equals f of 1. Put it here to get f of m equals 1. Now, here comes the magic. Let us plug in the value of x as m. What do we get? We get f of f of m on the left-hand side. But f of m is just 1, right? So this becomes f of 1, which is simply m. So we get an important result, which is f of f of m equals m. Now what about the right-hand side? We have x as m, and thus the right side will become m square minus m plus 1. Oh, wow. Take this m on this side to get m square minus 2. m plus 1 equals 0. Hey, this is a perfect square m minus 1 whole square, and that equals 0. So we get m equals 1. This means we found f of 1, which is equal to 1 itself. Yay. We are almost done because, in order to find the value of k, we only needed f of 1, which is 1. So substitute it here to get k square minus k plus 1 equals 1. 1 cancels out, and we are left with k squared minus k equals 0. Take k as common to get k times k minus 1 equals 0. This means either k equals 0 or k equals 1. And you might think that we are done. Since k equals f of 0, this means f of 0 is 0 and 1. This means we have two different values of f of 0. But here's the twist. That can never happen because a function has to be well-defined, which means if you have one input, then it cannot have more than one output. This is not valid. Therefore, this means that f of 0 is either 0 or 1, but not both. Suppose we have f of 0 as 0. Put x equals 0 in this equation. We get f of f of 0 equals this, which is 1. But f of 0 is 0, and thus this becomes 0. So it gives f of 0 equals 1. Hey, that's a contradiction because we have defined f of 0 as 0. 
so this is not valid, and hence f of 0 equals 1. That is our final answer. Like, share, and subscribe. So good!